Hello and welcome to Channels Book Club. I'm Olakunle Kasumu. Thanks for joining us and I hope you will have a good time watching. Today we'll be showing you an interview, a reading and a response to the age-long question about whether or not Africans read. Let's get started with our guest author who is reputed to be one of the most successful American thriller writers out there. Mark Cameron had many years of experience in law enforcement before fully focusing on writing. He has since written critically acclaimed thriller novels. He is well known for writing parts of the popular Jack Ryan series and the award-winning Jericho Queen series. We met with Mark Cameron for a brief chat about his writing and things related. Enjoy the interview. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You were in law enforcement for about 30 years. And then from law enforcement, you went to full-time writing. Uh, how did you make the transition? Well, I, I, always wanted a, I always wanted to be a writer. I knew I wanted to be a writer from the time I was a small boy. And I wrote stories, and my family would take long trips, and I would write, you know, fill up notebooks full of stories, but I never could get them published for years. And so as a, a young police officer, um, I knew I wanted to be a writer. I knew when I got married, and I told my wife I wanted to be a writer. And that first year of our, uh, our marriage, she gave me a, a Smith Krona electric typewriter and a, a bulletproof vest because they didn't buy us those back in the day. So she's really supported me along the way. But I just kept, you know, with, with an eye of being a writer when I would arrest someone. And, and, you know, one thing that people don't realize is that most of the people we arrest are not evil people. They're people that have made a mistake. And so I would talk to them and chat with them and get to know them and their backstory and many of them and have ended up in books. And I've arrested some evil bad people too, very bad people. Um, and I talk to them as well. And you know, you kind of lose your fear of people when you deal with yeah. hunting bad guys all the time. So that's, that's helped my uh, plotting of the books a lot. About 30 years in law enforcement, which obviously um, is a profession that gives you an interface with crime and violence and all those things. Um, did that influence you to go into the crime fiction genre? You know, I think it, particularly the action. I like books. I'm, I'm the type of person that likes action. And so, I mean, that's why I got into that line of work. Both my sons were in law enforcement. My oldest is now in medical school. My youngest is still a police officer, we enjoy that sort of thing. Um, and so I think just the type of person I am, I enjoy activities and action, and so um, it, it dictated the kind of books I would write. But the, the people I worked with, the, the men and women that I worked alongside, the uh, people that I've arrested, those have all ended up in my books. The stories have ended up, you know, changed to make them probably much more exciting than they were in real life but uh, have ended up in, in my stories one way or another. Obviously in law enforcement, you tend to meet people of different characters. I'm guessing that picking your characters or describing or creating your characters in your books will be quite easy considering the fact that for over 30 years, you met people of all sorts. The, the characters, you're, you're absolutely right. The, Plots are sometimes difficult to, to figure out and come up with and make them believable, but I have no end of just this treasure trove of characters of, of really just fascinating, heroic, good people that I've been able to work with, um, my own children among them. Um, you know, they all, two of them really like riding motorcycles, two of them are martial artists, two, you know, they're, and these people that I've worked with, the, the marshal service, the military, the local police, the other agencies, the secret service, FBI, um, just really fantastic people that want to do the right thing. And then the characters on the bad guy side, the people that are not necessarily bad, they just made bad mistakes, but also the really bad people. I draw from those as well. How do you... Um how do you see the world? How do you see people? Um, I, I'm just thinking, we've got all these years as a law enforcement agent, you are trained to be observant and to watch and to study character. 
and then from there you move to becoming a writer which is also a profession mm-hmm. that requires you are super observant mm-hmm. you know and picking up things uh, so uh, would it be right to say when you walk the streets you are not exactly uh, um, the normal guy who is just careless about what's happening all around him right now that's a really good question and a good observation that we had to be extra observant um, they say that there's this, I don't remember who said it, but there's a saying that writers remember everything they hear and see and then forget where they heard and saw it, so they take the credit, right? So you have to be observant of people and characters and um, kind of get your head out of your phone. Um, but as a police officer, a law enforcement officer, you have to do that to be safe. And I think while I was still an active duty law enforcement officer, I was probably a little more judgmental, like, ah, that guy looks dangerous, I'm not going to, where my friends now might be a little bit in the gray areas of the law because I need to talk to those people and I don't really care if they're breaking that particular whatever ordinance of the city. I just, I think I'm a little more open. You ask a very interesting question where you said, how do I view the world? I try to view the world realistically, which means that I know that there is bad out there. I'm not going to turn a blind eye to it, but I also believe that there are just magnificent people in all cultures and all across the world, and I think often Americans are particularly guilty of it. I think we get sort of myopic in that we, the center of the world is us, and I, and I tell this to everybody, not just because you're from Africa, but we... I get to travel enough that I I think that's really the the travel Mark Twain said it and I'm paraphrasing him but travel is the the best thing to conquer prejudice in the world because you get to meet so many different people and realize oh mm-hmm. they're just trying to feed their families like I am yeah. and I think most people just want that you picked up the Jack Ryan character um I mean Tom Clancy obviously was a legend and created Jack Ryan character, and he, he passed on. And you've been one of those who have written, taken up um, the responsibility of continuing um, the Jack Ryan series. Uh, who is Jack Ryan to you? What does he mean to you? No, that's a very good question. I, I grew up, well, not grew up, but I, when I was a young policeman, brand new in the police academy, Hunt for Red October came out and so I was 21 and barely old enough to buy my own bullets kind of, kind of a thing. I was a very young police officer so I kind of grew up in my law enforcement career reading every new Clancy book as it came out and so I feel like I know those characters so it's such a it's an honor but it's also terrifying uh, when Mark, uh, Mark Graney who took up the pen after actually while Tom Clancy was still alive, and then Mark wrote Seven, I think, uh, and Mark recommended me for the job when uh, he decided to focus more on his Gray Man series, um, which is a wonderful series. But uh, it was terrifying. It was it was really scary because I love those characters so much. And Jack Ryan is one of the, he's the kind of person that I really try to be like and want my kids to be like. You do the right thing without thinking about the consequences because it's the right thing. And there's, there are people in the world really like that. And um, I think most of us fall short and we, we try, but I, he's a very fun character to write, to write about his, the next book that comes out, um, Code of Honor, it comes out at the end of this month. I work quite a bit with his uh, relationship with his wife, uh, Kathy Ryan, and you know her intelligence, I mean, she's a, doctor, you know, an ophthalmologist and a very smart lady. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't have a, a, not a smart lady married to somebody like Jack Ryan or he wouldn't marry someone that was not also intelligent. Um, so I like his family dynamic. I, the other characters, John Clark and Domingo Chavez, I feel like I've, I've known those through the years. So they've been very fun to write. Some writers, after they have hit particular levels of success become a little bit relaxed and just want to take things easy. Um, some others are constantly hungry. They're just, they're just hungry for as many years as, as possible.
For you, where are you right now? That's, that's another good question. I, I'm 57 years old, so I, and I have grandchildren that wear me out, and uh, I, I'm, I'm about where I want to be. I feel so fortunate to have the, my own. I have two series of my own, and then the Tom Clancy series. I'm writing the kind of books that I want to write. I have fun writing them. The, the Tom Clancy series has been such a blessing because it opens doors. Our other series were doing well, but the Tom Clancy series opens doors in research with the military and other countries and other, because he's so well known um, that it, it puts me in a good spot that way. So it's still extremely fun for me. And I, I'm the kind of person that if I'm not enjoying my life, I'll find something else to do because I had, I consider being a deputy U.S. Marshal, which I did for 22 years after I was a policeman, the best job in the world. I just enjoyed going to work every day. Being a novelist, being to write these books and think up these stories is the second best job in the world and I love doing it. I'm happy to be doing it. I'm right where I want to be. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure having you here. No, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.